I'm Ozzy Griffin and this is a post of a Sexual Futurist. In fact, it's a redo of a post of my critical analysis of Jason Evert's talk, Romance Without Regret. Uh, let it never be said, I'm above uh, redoing a video because quite frankly, I get stuff wrong from time to time. If you can show me where I've got something factually incorrect, believe me, I want to know about it. So. Uh, Shasani's been already nice enough to do a talk on uh, Jason Evert. And quite frankly, uh, if you've ever talked to Shasani, uh, uh, in addition to her videos, you'll see that she is very, very far from stupid. And you can see why, once I go over his techniques, what he said might have had a little bit less impact on her than uh, a lot of other people. So, here it is. Basically, Jason takes a talk called Romance Without Regret, where he shows that physical interaction... Uh, emotional intimacy and the religious idea of either purity or of sanctifying a relationship in any form are completely separate things or can be tackled separately and, in and intertwined where the individual sees as fit. I happen to agree with that. So let it never be said I don't agree with something. Uh, he does very, very much say that if you have issues about what you've done or what you may do or what you will do, you can talk to a priest in a confessional and they are bound by an oath of secrecy and they will be excommunicated if they divulge it. He's very, very adamant about that. He's very, very clear about that. So once again, let it never be said that I was completely unfair to the bloke. That is true. You can watch the talk. I'll put in a link to his YouTube channel as well. Uh, just so you can see what he says in his own words. Not my words, his. And now here's my problems. One, he starts the meeting off. Not a minute has gone since he's been set foot on the stage and the camera's focused in on him. No, he starts the meeting off with a little freeform prayer. God bless this meeting, yada, yada, yada. He then goes to recitation of the Hail Mary. Now, many of you from... Uh, NFL fans know the Hail Mary is a last chance shot in football. That's true. In Catholic tradition, it is a very uniform prayer that is recited all around the world. It depicts Mary, the mother of God, or the mother of Christ, depending on how you prefer your wording, to be a... what do you call it? To be a perfect, pure woman. In fact, it is just this image which has been perpetrated by the Catholic Church and a few other faiths that has actually set up what's called the Madonna whore dichotomy. It is either, it is when a man sees a woman as being so pure that he cannot find her sexually attractive, yet that's the only kind he'll marry, or so dirty and sinful that she's the only, and carnal that she's the only kind he can feel sexual attraction for that he can't sustain any sort of long-term relationship with. It's a dichotomy. Jason, in many of his talks, will show that he's wearing the Virgin Mary medal. And he talks about purity, and he talks about chastity, and... As good a talk as he gives, when you start reciting things... Because if you've grown up in a Catholic school, and I went to a Catholic school from... Uh, grade 3 to grade year 12. Uh, so that's... Yeah, approximately 8 years, give or take, of Catholic schooling that I had. You can recite this prayer in your sleep. So... That actually has an effect on the brain. This has been shown with medical studies. It shows that the electrical activity in the frontal lobe that hit, hits uh, critical thinking and active listening and questioning uh, starts to die down and it gets redirected to the left left hemisphere where in the left hemisphere you're basically uh, reciting and recalling and you become very, very good at passive regurgitation of uh, information and uncritical thinking and observing. Note that. And it's not just any prayer, it's the Hail Mary reinforcing the Madonna whore dichotomy and putting an image in all of these kids' heads and it's one of purity. In inverted commas. The second thing he does that I disrespect him for 
is a psychological warfare te uh, technique called emasculation. Now, let me see if I remember how he does this. He picks a strapping young lad from the crowd. And I'm just going to keep track of the in internal. I'm going to keep track of how many jokes I can make here. He picks a young man from the crowd, tall, strong, good-looking, one. And he asks him to come up on the stage there with him too. And then he uh, says, I'm going to need a simulation for my date. And you're going to be at three. And uh, then he gives him a woman's name for, and a uh, long, long wig, uh, uh, I don't think there's a joke there. Then he says, well, I'm going to take you on a day to the Grand Canyon. No, that's probably fifth. Um, then he says, I'm going to pick you up, six, and you've got to remember his wife is, uh, she's his wife now, she's his fiance at the time of the recording. She is off to the side of the stage watching all this, six. Um, so, uh, then he says, I'm going to, he physically picks the guy up on stage, and that's seven, and then he says, I'm taking you close to the edge, I'm taking you close to the edge, how close do you want to get? And the, and eventually has to, the guy has to ask him to um, put him down at the edge uh, so he doesn't go over the Grand Canyon. There's nine jokes at least. So, nine jokes later, he has performed a psychological warfare technique uh, on the whole crowd. The guys are intimidated. The girls are subtly, subconsciously even, impressed. And he's looked physically um, more dominant. He has uh, used an intimidation tactic, which is the intellectual equivalent of a gorilla beating its chest and uh, cowing its, and roaring at its rivals. So he's stopped them critically analyzing things, and then he's intimidated uh, the guys and impressed the women. There's a YouTube user called Richard M. O'Brien. Uh, his working title is a stand-up philosopher. I've been a great fan of his uh, here for a while. And he will tell you, and I will tell you from my own experience, if you want to get the most out of teenagers, because when you think mental titans, teenagers do not usually apply. Believe me. Question, get them to question their own psychology. Because believe me, they're at a prime stage to do it. Get them to really challenge themselves, and you will get the most fantastic results out of them. If you talk to children about how their physical interactions and their uh, and their romantic interactions can be separate, they'll say, "I never thought of it like of it like that before." Though now you mention it, and you ask them, "When have you felt?" romantically attracted to somebody even though you couldn't physically touch them and in these days of the internet you'll probably get a couple of examples of that you talk you talk about it and when you open up a discussion kids will start sharing their stories and with a little guidance you can get a great result and believe me that'll do better than any dogmatic purity ball loving um, things like you'll see in the movie the purity myth and uh, Jason by the way was in that movie so I cannot respect the man. And I'm starting to see why Shasani might have had a few issues with him as well. I like somebody who talks to me straight up. When I was a kid and I wanted answers about things, I'd ask honest questions, and the best answers I got were straightforward and honest answers. And if someone could challenge me on my thinking, I respected them. Even if I didn't agree with them, I respected them. And that meant I listened. This man, if you look at the, go through the talk, you'll see shots of the crowd and a lot of the kids, like there's, they're always focusing on the kids going, wow, that makes such sense. And I can usually spot about a swath of kids behind him just going, yeah, sure. And I gotta tell you, that's actually probably the best thing I've seen all day. Sorry, my personal opinion there. So even the weird thing is even Jason says, Right, well, sex before marriage is emasculating you as men. New, no. new, no. telling men that they can't display their own sexuality, that's emasculating. Whether it's a nagging housewife, uh, a narcissistic partner in a relationship, or Jason Evert picking a guy up on stage, <laughs> there's that tenth joke, um, in order to intimidate the crowd 
believe me, that's actually the emasculation. And did I mention it's a trait hallmark of narcissistic personalities and sociopaths to project their own bad behavior onto a crowd? Yeah, probably nothing to that. Anyway, Jason Eva, don't take my word for it. Check out his own channel. It is here on YouTube. And check out Romance Without Regret. Please, if I've gotten anything wrong, let me know. Show me documentation. I'd love to see it. With that said, I'm Ozzy Griffin, and it has been a thorough pleasure talking to all of you.